All right, Keiko, we are ready. Jim, is Keiko unmuted? Amen. So, um, good morning, everyone. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to see all of your faces this morning. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of announcements for the good of the community. Uh, I will be on study leave this week. Um, starting tomorrow and through next Sunday, I'm attending the Festival of Homiletics all week. Um, I've never been able to attend before, so I'm very excited about that. And I hope I will come back with um, inspiring ways of sharing God's love. Uh, so next week, since I'm off, Susan Grayson, Reverend Susan Grayson, who is the associate at Emmanuel Presbyterian, will be leading you in worship. And um, we're not going to be using PowerPoint next week because Susan isn't um, comfortable with it. But the order of worship will be emailed out as usual. So please have your... Um, print out your order of worship or have it up on another screen so that you can follow along with the lay reader. And even if you can't, even if you don't, the um, Susan and the lay reader will be reading the parts so you can still participate in the prayers by listening. Um, a reminder today is communion Sunday. So if you don't have your elements ready, um, you might want to take time, take a minute now to do it, or we'll have time. I'll leave some time before we actually start the Lord's Supper. Uh, and finally, I'll be um, joining with people after fellowship time for adult education. We've been reading um, Amy Jill Levine's um, short stories of Jesus. We've finished this series last, I think you finished it with Marilyn last week. And I, my plan was to go back and start again at the beginning, but if people who are here today want to start with a different story, we can do that and flexible. Um, and I think that's it. So let us prepare our hearts to worship our God in spirit and in truth. Please, um, Jay. 
Are you unmuted? Bless the Lord, O people, sing. Let the sound of praise ring out. Come and hear what the Lord has done. The Lord who has made everything. Let us sing I, hymn 288, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Keiko. Oops. Jim is Keiko. There's not one plant or flower below, but makes God's glories known. And I love the, the line, while all that borrows life from thee, we truly borrow life from God. And then it returns to him. We return to him. And so my friends, God not only asks us to repent, but also assures us of forgiveness. And so therefore let us confess our sins to the one who is steadfast in love. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandments. We fail to love you. Our conscience is not clear. Wash us in the water of life that we may live again through the grace and mercy of Jesus, 
our resurrected savior. Amen. Siblings in Christ, God forgives and restores and strengthens us through the risen Christ. So let us declare the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. All right, so now we come to the time of joys and concerns. <clears throat> when um, we share prayers, our prayers with the um, community. So if you have something to share, please raise your hand and I will call on you and Jim will unmute you. So I see Barney and Helen have their hand up. Okay, Helen, you're unmuted. I have a wonderful joy to share. I'm getting a new computer. Oh, so I'll be on my computer next Sunday, which is downstairs in the living room. And there's plenty of chairs for two side by side down there. <laughs> uh, that'll She's be an expected computer, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have to do a May not be done by Sunday. It's supposed to arrive Thursday. Mm. Well, technology blessings. Right. <laughs> Atai, oh, Atai, I see your hand is up. Hang on a second. I can get it. Oops. There we go. Okay, you're unmuted. I have a joy to share. Because of this pandemic, uh, my son show, they stopped after taping. They were in the middle of their eighth season. So they had eight episodes, so they had to stop. Well, the good news is the show has been picked up again for season five. So that's a very good news. Yeah, yes. we like it when our children have work. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And it's a fun show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, blessings. Any other joys and concerns? Jim, do you see anything in the chat? Nope, nothing in the chat. Uh, ooh, could you unmute people on, on the phone? I guess I could do it. Shirley is here. Um, do you have any, Shirley, do you have any joys or concerns to share? Uh, yes, I have concerns to share. <clears throat> Richard's sort of taken uh, a turn for the worst this week. I've had him in the emergency room four times for a different reason each time. But it's been quite a difficult week. And he's um, not responding as well as he has been in uh, many ways. And so I'm asking really for a lot of prayers. We have help coming in on Monday, finally. Um, and I'm hoping that's going to work well. I'm a little nervous about it. And, uh, sure. Uh, peace for me. You've been waiting for that help for a long time. Yes, absolutely. And I'm so glad. I finally started calling last Monday uh, and let them know how much I needed it. And my caseworker over at our clinic and it's pulled it all together, I think, and so blessing for her. Okay. And is Richard yeah. today? Uh, I'm having just difficulty waking him up. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> he responds, but he just doesn't want to sit up. He doesn't, okay. doesn't want to. He's back asleep now. Yeah. But he wasn't uh, in the hospital. Okay. Yeah. He, he actually did something good. He, he turned over in the night. While he was asleep, he has not moved this entire week sleeping. Okay. So that's uh, that's good news that he did do that. Yeah. He's got multiple multiple things going on uh, with his body and with his mind and with his speech and yeah. Uh, I'm different so things. Really, I'm sorry. That, some, I'm sorry we can't be with you in person while you have to make those trips to the ER that you're there mm. by yourself. I'm sorry. Well, we kind of have to do that anyway. 
but they do let me come in. They're not letting visitors in the hospital, but they let me come into the emergency room. Okay. And um, the doctors have been very helpful and concerned over some of the things that are going on because they can't find anything on a on a X-ray. Yeah. And we know there's an, there's an injury, and uh, so we're going to have to see another go to another facility to see about that this coming week. All right. Well, we will. Um, you and Richard in our prayers. Yes, and I thank you for that. And thank you for all of you. It's good to hear Bye. you. Bye. Okay. Um, Don and Sandy, did you have any jo joys or concerns to share? No. no. I, I, we have a joy. Uh, our son works in the hospital in California, and so far everything's going well. Uh, no one has been getting the, the virus and so forth. And so just continued prayers and, you know, as we think every day that uh, everything will go and God will be there with them and they'll get, he'll get through all of this along with everyone else out there. Yeah. Yes, that's my, my prayer and my concern. Sure. Well, thanks be to God that he's still healthy. Yes. Uh, prayers yes. that he continues to be safe. Yes. Yeah, thank right. you. Right. Well, let us pray. Are there any other individual joys or concerns? Oh, Ann Fetter. Hang on. Yes. Praise God. My, my uh, brother-in-law has come back uh, home. And uh, first thing he wanted when he walked in the door, Jay tells me, is through my sister, that he wanted to turn on his ham radios. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Anne's brother-in-law had a kidney transplant, liver transplant? Liver transplant. Liver transplant. So he's just home after that. And then uh, my friend who had cataract surgery Monday is doing very well. Uh, I'm thankful for that. Yes. So, I'm, and I got outside yesterday. I took about a 100-mile trip. I went out to the cemetery in Marshall, Virginia, visited my parents. And then uh, I went, drove through Middleburg and, and I'd dropped off some things at Mandy's on the beginning of my journey and <laughs> just went around trip type thing, which put the sunroof down and cruised. Ooh, nice. And enjoyed creation. Yes, indeed. It was lovely. Amen. Um, Giselle, how's your brother? Oops, sorry, I have to unmute you. Sorry, go ahead. Moving, so we thank God for that. Thank you for your prayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And continue yeah. prayers for him. Yeah. Yes, we will continue to pray for Adel. All right. Any other joys or concerns? All right, well, let us pray. <clears throat> Great doctor. You show compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and fear. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases, malaria, dengue, HIV and AIDS, and other afflictions we name in our hearts that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication and care for people for mental illness and care for people who suffer with it. Give them an extra measure of your mercy, Lord, in this time of uncertainty and anxiety. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond our timidity and fear that let us ignore our neighbor. Strengthen and encourage people who work in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, 
everyone who commits themselves to caring for the sick and their family. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused in envelop on developing a vaccine. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard everyone who must travel. Guide the leaders of nations to speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation, act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Heal our world, Lord. Heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts, strengthen our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Hold in your gentle embrace everyone who has died and all who will die today. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love. Name of the one. Of the one. Okay. Okay. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven, give us this daily bread. Daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The vine is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the power, the glory, the glory now, and now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now we come to the time when we talk. And um, I'd like to let you know, um, you remember, you remember that So for a no, I'm unmuted. It keeps telling me I'm muted. Am I muted? Raise my. I am muted. I'm unmuted. Okay, I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> um, so you might remember recently that Sue Ferguson, Elder Sue Ferguson, announced that the church had su secured a Paytech Protection Program loan to cover. Um, salaries and um, mortgage interest. And <clears throat> that money has now been in our bank account, so it's available for us to use. Um, and one big reason that we were able to secure that loan is that our members pledge and they honor their pledges. And we have a relationship with the bank and the bank knows that. They recognize that. And our, lame, our loan came through the same bank that holds our mortgage. And they know that we have a track record of borrowing responsibly and honoring our commitments. And that's a reflection of you and your discipleship. And so because of the Paycheck Protection Program, we will not have to dip into our reserves to cover preschool faculty and staff whose families depend on their income and your faithful stewardship has truly come around full circle to bless us again. So please continue to mail your offerings to the church. And if you prefer to pay online, go to the website, cpcfairfax.org and use the PayPal link that is on our website. Uh, and remember, if you need to adjust your pledge, contact Elder Mary Ellen Absets. I certainly appreciate your witness in the practice of Christian generosity.
Amen. Thank you, Jay. Let us pray now. The prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, our helper and advocate. Open our hearts and minds today. Entice us with your presence and spark in us a word of life. A message we may share with others as we seek Christ's love in the world. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Acts. Chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. Whereas I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their essence, existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from us, each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, quote, for we too are his offspring. Unquote. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So um, we come to now to a time when I, um, would like to talk especially to the children and young people with us today. If you were listening to the passage that Mr. Lowe just read, um, the person who's talking is Paul, who's a disciple of Jesus. And um, he's in Greece where there are a lot of different religions and people believe in a lot of different things, including a lot of different gods. And he sees a, an altar that says, to an unknown God. So it's like an altar to praise something that people don't even know what it is. And he's saying, that is not God. God knows us. God knows us really well. And so, do you have somebody in your family who knows you really well? Do you have somebody who might not know all of your secrets, but they love you anyway? My child is 18 years old, and we just discovered recently that she used to lie to us about eating chocolate in the morning. She would come down very early in the morning and get snacks out of the cupboard. And um, she was very young. She was like before she was in kindergarten. And we didn't even know at the time that she knew how to lie. 
Um, and just knowing more about her endears her to my heart even more. Um, just knowing the truth about her. So I hope you have somebody in your life who really knows you, who knows your truth, and who loves you. Even if you do things that you know you're not supposed to do. And God, God loves us like that. And God also wants us to love God like that. Paul says, God, that <clears throat> God is nearby and God wants us to search for God. He said, put boundaries in places where they would live so that they would search for God. So just like we like to be known and found, we like people to notice if we're missing, God wants us to notice if God is missing and go look for God. As he's very nearby, we live and breathe and have our life in God. So let us say a little prayer. Bow our heads and close our eyes if that helps you or if you're coloring and that helps you keep coloring. So, dear God, I thank you that you know us and love us. And I thank you that you want us to look for you too. It's not just one-sided. You, you search us out and you want us to search you out too. So thank you, amen. Now we come to our second scripture reading in Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. Hear what the Lord says to you today. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has keep, kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. You went through fire and through water. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those, lip, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats, salah. Come and hear all you who fear God. And I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the God would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this prayer goes along with, um, with the first reading, talking about the nature of God. And the um, Psalms are from the Hebrew Bible. So they're from the part of our story before Jesus was born. And the, um, the writer of the Psalms, let's say it was David, um, he didn't have the crucifixion to refer to what he's probably referring to the great uh, deliverance in the Jewish story is Exodus. So the delivery from slavery in Egypt. And so when they're talking here, when he's talking here about God who has kept us among the living, who has not let our feet slip, 
for you have tested us, you have tried us as silver is tried. They're referring back to the Exodus and kept us among the living. Slavery didn't kill us. Slavery didn't destroy our people. You have tested us, you have tried us as silver is tried. And in the refining process, metals, precious metals are heated and impurities are burned off. And what's left is the pure metal, so pure silver, pure gold. And so maintaining their faith, even in their trial, even in their slavery, they were tested. They were tested by life, but also perhaps their faith was tested because, you know, you wonder, how long, O oh Lord? How long must we suffer? If you love us, why are we suffering? And their faith survived, and it survived in a purer form. And then the psalmist goes on to say, you brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our back. You let people ride over our heads. And the... Um, the Hebrew here isn't literally like people walking on your head or people riding horses over your head, but it's like human nature, the, um, the downside of human nature, people taking advantage of each other, people treating each other unkindly or with evil. And so suffering the human condition imposed by other humans are poor treatment of each other or abuse by each other. And then it says, yet you have brought us out into a spacious place. And the language here with spacious place is similar to the language in Psalm 23 about my cup runneth over, the abundance, the, um, the just immeasurable, unending abundance. And so there are a lot of similarities between this psalm and Psalm 23, which we read a couple of weeks ago, that, you know, the, there is suffering and then we are brought into a, an open place, a place of abundance and care. And then the person says, I will come into your house with burnt offerings and I will pay you my vows. Those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I think we can all identify with being in a spot where we might have prayed that desperate prayer of, oh Lord, if you just blank, I will blank. If you just heal my child, I will go to church every single Sunday. If you just let that loan come through or let this job come through, I will donate 30% of my income. And the person here is saying, everything that I will, that I promised you in my desperation and in my lack, I will deliver that in my abundance. And so while this psalm writer may have been talking about the history of the Exodus, we know from the, the arc of the Bible and from the arc of history and our own lives that this is a cycle, that there will always be a period of suffering that ends one way or another, and then there is deliverance. And then eventually there is another suffering, and then there is deliverance. And I feel like right now we are in one of those periods of suffering um, because we're on lockdown. We can't be with people who are sick, our loved ones who are sick, or loved ones who are grieving, loved ones who are dying. Um, kids can't go to school. We can't, you know, it's not easy to just zip out to the store and pick something up. But let us remember that God loves us unconditionally and that we know from history that this will not last. We will be brought into abundance. It will be a different opening. It will be a different open space than it was before, but it will come. And so while we are here in this confinement, and when we come out into our abundance, 
let us continue to search for our God, to look for and recognize and acknowledge God at work in our lives, even as God is pursuing us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now we come to the time when we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you have elements ready, I don't see anybody getting up to go get them. So I think we're good. All right. So we've talked about this before. We celebrate the Lord's Supper because Jesus told us to. And we remember the story of how Jesus taught us to celebrate the Supper. And then we also thank God as part of that. So there are a couple of parts to this um, ritual, to this sacrament. First of all, we remember why we do it. And second of all, we thank God for it, for the gift of the sacrament. And third, we share the elements. So let us begin. My friends, scripture says that they will come from north and south and east and west to sit at the table with our risen Lord. And on the day of his resurrection, our Lord walked with his friends and they were so filled with grief and so filled with, with despair that they did not recognize him. But he broke bread with them and their eyes were opened and they understood. On the night that Jesus offered himself up for us, he said, he, shared, he sat at table with his friends and he said, see this bread? He broke it. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, my friends, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat whenever you remember, and remember me whenever you do this. And likewise, he took the cup, and he poured out the wine, and he said, friends, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured in my blood for you. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your gift of creation, that your love spilled over and brought us into being, that we may borrow life from you. We thank you, Lord, for your covenant with your people, Israel, that you brought them out of Israel, that you brought them out of slavery in Egypt in the great Exodus, and that you continued to deliver them from hardship and crisis and your steadfast love, you remain faithful. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Christ who gave us this sacrament <clears throat> and told us to follow it, gave us a means of your grace to continue to be fed in spirit and in body. Lord, we thank you for your church, the gift of the spirit, the gift of companionship in our humanity, and the gift of meaning, of joining in your purpose in the world until your kingdom is fully recognized here on earth. And Lord, we thank you for your coming kingdom, the promise of our homecoming to you, our fullness in you and in your being. And so I ask you, Lord, that you <clears throat> recognize and bless all of the elements that we have prepared, the elements that I have here and the elements that everyone here on this call have prepared in their homes. Let it be for us the bread and blood, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so my friends, we do take this bread and break it. And as Jesus told us, we do take this fruit of the vine and we pour it out. And we remember that Jesus offered his body for us and offered his blood as the new covenant. So my friends, the table is ready. Let us keep the feast.
And now, let us join our voices in prayer, in thanksgiving. Thanking God for the gift of the church and the sacraments and life. Keiko. And now, my friends, as we prepare to leave this space, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much, Keiko. That was beautiful. Thanks.